All right, so this next question I want to solve as an example. Um, I've seen this in a lot of textbooks. A lot of professors like to put this, and particularly in homework questions. Uh, it's a little tricky at first, but it's not that bad. So let me show you. Um, it says here, one way to simulate gravity or create artificial gravity in a space station is to spin it. So if you have a space station you spin, it generates, um, it simulates gravity. Okay. Now it says here, if a cylindrical space station, it, if that means that it's basically shaped in like a cylinder, like a big uh, soda can, okay, is has diameter 500, so diameter equals 500. Now in physics, you're never going to use diameter. So whenever you have diameter, immediately change it for radius. And radius is half of a diameter, um, so this is 250 meters. It's spun about its central axis. So if you have a cylinder, the central axis is this, right? It's like the obvious way you would spin a cylinder, uh, the least awkward anyway. Um, anyway, um, the question here is if it's spun around central axis, so it looks like this, how many, at how many revolutions per minute must it turn? So I want to know what is the RPM that I need? So that the outermost points, so basically if you are obviously inside but over here, have an acceleration equal to the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth. This here, the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth, this whole phrase just means little g. And at the surface of the Earth, it's g on Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second square, or 9.81. Um, so here's the idea. This is sort of a view at an angle. But if I want to have a top view, it would look like this. Right, if I want to look from here, that's what I mean by a top view, I guess. Um, if I want to look from here, I'm going to see this guy here. This thing, let's say, spinning like that. And you're being pulled towards the middle. And that creates um, a centripetal acceleration that then simulates gravity. So the idea is how, how, how fast do I have to spin so that the outermost points, the blue dot right there, has an acceleration so that my centripetal acceleration this way equals g on Earth. That's the idea. If AC equals g, what must my RPM be, RPM be so that I can accomplish that? Okay. So you might remember I mentioned that to, um, you're usually going to convert RPM into frequency. Those things are very well connected. Frequency, period, and RPM are all linked up together. And when I get RPM, I usually gonna, I'm usually going to replace it with frequency using this equation. Frequency equals RPM by 60. Now in this problem, it's going to be kind of backwards. Um, if I want free RPM, I'm going to have to find frequency and then turn it into RPM. Okay. Now looking at the information that I have here, how can I try to extract uh, frequency from here? Right. If you look at it, it doesn't look like frequency is anywhere here. But if you look at the equations we have, which is V equals 2 pi R F, that has frequency in it, um, divided by, actually that's it, and A C is V squared over R, I hope you see how A, which I'm given here, I know A is 9.8, is connected to V, and V is connected to F. So I'm going to go from A to V to F to RPM by using basically all the equations we have almost for circular motion. Okay? So AC is 9.8. AC is also V squared over R and that equals 9.8. Um, so I'm going to be able to solve for V. V equals the square root of 9.8 times R. R is 250. When I do this, I get 49.5 meters per second. Now that I have V, I can try to find F. So V equals 2 pi R F. So F equals V over 2 pi R. So 49.5 divided by 2 pi 250. And if you plug this, you get a frequency of 0 0.032 hertz. Lastly, 
there's the equation that says frequency is RPM over 60, but I want RPM, so RPM is just going to be 60F. Here's my F. Once you multiply this, you rounds up to about 1.9 um, RPMs. RPM equals 1.9. This means that you need 1.9 RPM. Okay? So if this thing rotates at a rate of almost twice per minute, right? So that's what RPM means, right? How many times per minute? Um, it's going to create a simulated gravity of 9.8. So that's how that works. Basically, a lot of changing of these variables by using a bunch of the equations we have. But hopefully, you agree that it's pretty straightforward. It's just kind of long and annoying. All right? That's it for this one.